One more movie to talk about today, and we're going to end things on a high note here with La La Land, written and directed by Damien Chazelle and starring Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. Gosling plays Sebastian, a struggling musician. Stone plays Mia, a struggling actress, and the two of them meet and fall in love in present-day Los Angeles. And the story covers their struggles with their chosen professions and also the ups and downs of their relationship, and occasionally singing and or dancing ensue. This is one of the few genuine best picture contenders I actually saw this year. Uh, it might be the only one, come to think of it. Don't know how that happened, but here we are. But yeah, this was charming as all hell. This is clearly a love letter to the old-timey song and dance movies like Singing in the Rain, but it's taken that concept and moved it into the present day, and does so quite well, I thought. The movie opens with this elaborate song and dance number in the middle of a traffic jam, which is about as L.A. as you can get, and it's incredibly well done. The entire number looks like it was done all in one take. I'm sure it wasn't, there's probably some trickery going on here or there, but it looked pretty damn impressive. And every once in a while throughout the movie, a caption will pop up on the screen, letting the audience know what season it is. The movie starts out in winter, and then goes to spring, and summer, and fall, and back to winter again. And of course, nothing changes because it's Los Angeles, and they don't have seasons. It's such a cheap gag, but for me, it kind of worked. And I love how Sebastian and Mia's relationship begins, because they start out in that traffic jam, and Mia is not pulling forward immediately when she has room to do so because she's distracted by something. Sebastian's right behind her, so he passes her while obnoxiously honking his horn at her. She responds by flipping him off. So, of course, those two are gonna fall in love, right? And it sounds very silly, but I've known people who did not make a very good first impression and still ended up together. One of my very good friends, when he met his future wife, I believe the very first thing he ever said to her was something along the lines of, get out of the way, you're blocking the TV. And somehow they ended up falling in love. These things have a way of working themselves out. And Mia and Sebastian's relationship does feel very genuine. Through all of its ups and downs, especially through the downs, you can tell these two still very much care about each other. And their respective professional struggles also feel very genuine. Mia is currently working as a barista when she's not at an audition for a TV show or a movie or what have you. And she's been trying to get her big break in Hollywood for years and it's just not happening for whatever reason. And it's not because she doesn't have talent or she doesn't work hard. Quite the contrary, she's very talented and she works incredibly hard, but she just cannot catch a break. I'm sure that's something a lot of struggling actors can identify with. Probably not just actors, that I'm sure applies to a lot of professions. And Sebastian also has his struggles with his big dream of one day opening up his own jazz club. And this leads to a pretty funny conversation between him and Emma Stone when, you know, he asks her, so, do you like jazz? And she says, not really. What? <laughs> so, I, I liked that moment, I really did. But anyway, when the movie begins, Sebastian is forced to pay the bills by playing piano at this restaurant, and he's basically limited to playing Christmas carols, even though he would much rather be doing some improvisational jazz, but the owner of the restaurant has made it quite clear that he doesn't want any of that shit, and the owner of the restaurant is J.K. Simmons, so you better listen. But despite this being a very simple job that he couldn't possibly screw up, he ends up screwing it up when he just cannot resist the urge to play that jazz, damn it! And Gosling can play piano, who knew? And because the owner of the restaurant is played by J.K. Simmons, and because this was written and directed by the same guy who wrote and directed Whiplash, I half expected J.K. to just walk up to Gosling and smack him in the face and shout, NOT MY FUCKING TEMPO! Sadly, that did not happen, but it would have been funny. And even though Sebastian's shortcomings are sometimes his own damn fault, because he is a stubborn son of a bitch, it still feels very genuine, and you do feel sympathy for this character. Overall, the story's pretty good, the movie is shot very well, the musical numbers were choreographed quite well, especially that scene I mentioned in the traffic jam, that was very well done. The only problem is, I personally didn't find any of the songs to be all that memorable. Your mileage may vary, but for me, 
they didn't really stick with me. In fact, I'm having a hard time remembering any of them at all, and I just saw the movie a few days ago. Compare that to Moana, for example, which I saw weeks ago, I still can't get your welcome out of my head. I suppose part of it may be that Gosling and Stone aren't the strongest singers in the world and most of the musical numbers revolve around them. But they're not bad by any means. They're okay. They're just... There's a reason they don't sing professionally. I'll put it that way. They can dance, though. Overall, this was a lot of fun and it has charm to spare, and I will be surprised if it does not take home any awards at the Oscars this year. This is the type of movie that the Academy voters tend to love, and it's pretty good besides. If you're a fan of the old-timey song and dance musicals, this is definitely worth your time. Even if you're not, I would say it's still worth checking out, at least as a matinee. Even if the singing and dancing isn't your thing, it still has a really good story that should more than make up for that. And that about wraps it up for La La Land, so until next time, take care.